How's It's Going is me, Josh Halter, the bio dude, and today I am going to be discussing a new product that I'm going to be carrying as well as showing you guys how to set up a paludarium. Um, a little bit different approach of setting it up to make cleanup, maintenance, filtration, and overall um, how your tank looks um, more efficient and nicer. I'm also going to talk about the inhabitants that are going in this enclosure, which are my Borneo ear frogs. Um, and uh, that's pretty much where I'm going to start. The tank before you is a 36 by 18 by 18 Exoterra. As you can hear the dummies in the background, they must agree. I have a small uh, whisper filter here in the corner. That's what I'm going to be using to filter the water. And then at the very top here, I have my 22 inch LED. My, uh, uh, with uh, my nice props uh, to, for my plants to illuminate the vivarium, putting out the proper Kelvin and lumens to illuminate and of course strengthen your plants as well as the 5% UVB source that is in here as Borneo ear frogs um, require um, UVB as part of their natural, um, you know, of, of what their requirements are. So the very first thing that I'm going to show you guys is this black stuff that's sitting here at the bottom of my tank, and that is called Matala. What Matala is, it's great. You can bend it, you can cut it with scissors, but you can't compress it. You can manipulate it to bend on the outside, but you can't compress it again. What's really great about it? is that it, once you zoom in a little bit closer, um, you can see the consistency of it. And essentially what I'm doing here is instead of using a bunch of rocks that's very heavy and has issues allowing water to pass through, um, ma making bad biological pockets, this allows the water to go from point A all the way to point B without having as much blockage while adding some biofiltration into the tank cutting the weight of your tank by almost 80% and will serve as the same function as my rock ledge, which I'm gonna show you guys. So the very first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hide this filter because I don't like how this filter looks. So what I did with this cork tube is I drilled four holes right in here, which I'm gonna be selling this combo real soon. I'm gonna take the filter and I'm gonna put it literally right in here right like that. So water is able to pass behind the cork through the slit right here as well as through these front four, four holes or excuse me six holes. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that that's working properly. That's the very first thing I'm going to do before I do anything else because I don't want to set this up and have it get messed up so I'm going to dump water in here now this will also function as a water area for my tadpoles I currently have about a hundred a hundred corneo ear frog tadpoles and this will also work as a um, egg deposition site for them I'm actually going to put a little bit more in here Okay, so I went about an inch and a half deep. You can see the Matala is not floating. It it's, has nice little creases here. So what I'm gonna do next, is I'm gonna plug in the filter to make sure that it is, the water level is deep enough and that I have it positioned correctly. Okay. It's plugged in, now let's see here. While this is figuring out everything, I'm gonna let this sit for just a moment. The next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start adding rocks and to the bottom. And this is how I'm gonna escape the, the water area. So the first thing I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna put rocks right like this. I'm doing this to make it look like a natural riverbed that's sloping up on top of the land. A lot of people do this for paludariums, but what they do is they put an entire drainage layer of rock that is about this deep 
that weighs about 120 pounds. And instead of using 120 pounds of rock, I use only not even 30 pounds of rock, which again, gives you the same desired effect that you like with your paludariums and things like that that allows you to not have to break your back every time you want to move it. And it looks like yeah, I'm going to have to add a little bit more water in there, which is okay. The water that I added is distilled water. That's pretty much all I use. Um, but you can use either or. You can use pretty much any type of rock here that you want to create your, your, your layering system. But I choose to use Colorado River rock because it looks the nicest. So you see how some of the, some of the rocks are falling through to the metallic here? To prevent that from happening, just like you would with any other drainage layer, you're going to put down the screen, right like this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to tuck in the screen like this and push everything forward. This keeps the screen in place, prevents it from getting moved in the future, again while still providing everything that is needed. Yep, it is needed a little bit more water. Go ahead here. All right. A little bit more. I'm going to get at the end of the video. But you guys can see right here, essentially what I am discussing as far as what my goals are. You see how deep the water is. You can clearly see the Matala, how it's functioning. You can clearly see how much extra space I have above the water level, which is very important. So the next step of doing all of this is adding your substrate. Um, for this, I'm gonna be using my Terraflora um, substrate to uh, th that is already incorporated with Bioshot and with the Powder Blue Isopods and Springtails uh, to make sure that the tank is already seeded to be the self-cleaning, self-maintaining. Um, and this is from their prior enclosure that I had set up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my substrate that I already have taken care of here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to Throw it in. There is a bunch of isopods in here. I can see some crawling around in here. There's isopods, springtails, the falsamia, and giant whites are in here. Of course, with the bio shot. You can see how I'm spreading everything here. And I'm actually going to make the substrate pretty deep towards the back. Now this species in general, one thing I absolutely love about the Borneos is that, oh look at that, it's is that they are completely, um, yeah, they're very easy to take care of, but they're out during the day is great. So they are partially nocturnal, but they do enjoy their time out during the day hunting, basking in the UVB, things like that. It's very important that you provide them with a, a branch that allows them to bask underneath the UVB. All right, so you guys can see here what I got going on. I have some sphagnum moss mixed in with the terraflora uh, to give me 
maximum drainage while providing the nutrition needed to get your tank happy and healthy. The next piece that I'm gonna put in here is the, I got a really nice piece of Mopani. And I'm actually gonna use that right like this. Yeah, definitely gotta get this water level risen, but I'll do that at the end of the video after you guys can take a good look at it. I'm digging that, that looks really nice. Having two separate shallow pools right there. And then the next thing that I'm gonna do is figure is get their basking set up. Now I do have a piece of manzanita right here that I think I'm gonna put right here like that. And what that's gonna do is these branches here, 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 kind of all over the place, they're gonna perch. And they're just gonna sit there and absorb the UVA, UVB to help digest their food and basically maintain, you know, homeostasis. And then I'm going to start adding uh, their cork. Borneo tree frogs in general, they absolutely love cork bark. They love it. They love to sleep inside the holes. They like to nestle their bodies into the holes to make themselves feel a little bit more comfortable. And they also like to perch in said holes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put a good amount of them scattered among here to give them exactly what they like. like that. Would you look at that? The filter is almost completely hidden, yet still serving the purpose that you need it to, to fulfill. And I'm still not done with that yet, but it's coming along. So the net, so I wanna definitely have this piece up here, like this, to give them, the, take up that back corner a little bit. Yeah. And then I'm gonna take This small tube right here. I'm gonna put that like that. Oh yeah, and then I'm gonna take this like this. And then I'm gonna put that. I'm figuring it out. I'm not sure how exactly I want to have this. I definitely want to have this cord and stuff covered. But at the same time, I want to make sure that I'm... There we go. That's it. I can deal. And then... I'm still deciding on this piece. This is a piece of ghost wood. No. What if it's... Nope. Got a couple more tubes in here that I want to utilize for these guys. Again, they absolutely love them. They love, love, love tubes. Now, I don't know about this one. I'm still on the fence of five. That piece is too big. What if it's something it's... There we go. What do you guys, I, I can deal with that. I think that looks nice. You can see an isopod crawling all over the, all over the wood there. Then the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in the background foliage, which I have some green pothos right here. That actually has been growing in there. It was growing splendidly well in their previous tank. Um, and I'm actually gonna put this 
Now I'm gonna dig a hole all the way down to the, uh, to the matana. I'm gonna bury it like you would any normal plant. And since it branches both ways, I'm gonna send one branch to grow up towards here like this. And then I'm gonna send this one to grow the other way, covering as much surface area and volume as I can as this is a creeping vining plant. Sometimes the pothos doesn't grow the way you want it to grow and if you, if you want to manipulate it, it's as easy as cutting it and putting it elsewhere. The next thing I'm gonna add is one of my favorites. It's a lemon button fern. I like these because they get bushy and see that? Beat the crap out of it. That's what you need for Put this, I'm gonna put this right here. All right. I can deal. And then I got a small mahogany fern. So I'm gonna put, um, actually, Hmm, I don't like that. I got another, I got a bromeliad right down here that I know for a fact I can see the roots right here. So I want to make sure that those roots are close to where I want them to be. No, I think, you guys think about that. That's not too bad. I like that. I think that looks good. And then I have another plant. This guy right here. Now I'm sure a lot of you guys are thinking this looks crowded. It is crowded because this is what they like. They like their environment to be dense. They like root systems to be everywhere. They like places to bask. They like places to plop their fat bodies so they can just take it easy. That's what they like. So I want you guys to gauge that in really quick. Take a good look at it. So I grabbed a few more things, full disclosure. Thought I had everything. So I grabbed two different nut pods that I'm actually gonna put in here um, that your microphone I will absolutely love. And I'm literally just kind of put them like this. And then in here, these are Devil's Ear Seed Pods. Nice, nice and easy like that. And then for the front basin, I decided that some live moss would look really nice. So I'm gonna put some of the dudes live green moss right here at the water's edge. And as it grows, it should go and spread a little bit to the desired areas which you would like it to. That's one of the best things about sheet moss. It's extremely easy. The stuff that I'm applying is dried out a little bit, and that's actually how I like to get it acclimated. It makes it a little bit easier. And then I'm gonna put a little bit up here in the corner. Okay. It's not bad, I like that. And then last but not least, got the perfect accent piece to really make this pop. One of my Top selling items as far as plants go on my website are my bromeliads. The bromeliads that I sell 
are planted established adults that have offsets to them. This is an adult. This is how big that they get and you can see the extensive root base. This takes away all the hardness of keeping them, in my opinion. Uh, makes it really, really easy. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put these guys, I'm gonna put some moss right there, but ideally, that, that's it. That's the perfect amount of light for that species. And this gives them the ability um, to get as much water as they need when they need it. So the next step, I think this is looking good guys. So you can see the Matala really holding up its end of the deal here. Um, isn't, getting, isn't getting compressed whatsoever. Um, and you can see the water lines going right through it. You can see an isopod down there, you know, drowning, that's a shame. But as far as the isopods going from the substrate into the Matala, as long as you have the screen protector in there, it's nothing that you really have to worry about. So, the next step, and my favorite step, is adding the frogs. As you can see, I have a lot of them. So I'm gonna put this guy here, put that guy there. I'm gonna put one of my big girls in here. And I have bred these guys. I will show you guys some of the babies that I actually have currently. Little guys. Check them out. Absolutely beautiful frogs. They have the zebra backing. Got them go. Now, since I got the frogs in, the next thing that I'm gonna do is this cage is going to be 100% automated. So I do have two double Miss King nozzles that I made. I do sell these on my website. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get them connected in each corner of the vivarium. I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Which is really, really, really easy. So the first piece, the first thing you're going to do is you are going to take the tubing. I have a tubing and the connector pieces to hook it up to the rest of the system as I keep dropping it. So, first thing I'm going to do is get the pieces themselves mounted into the cage. So I'm going to cut off a piece about this big. People tell you you have to use tubing cutters. I don't. And, and look at me. I'm just fine. So I'm going to take this piece right here and you're just going to snip it in until it clicks. Then you're going to, there's a notch back here and you're going to move it back to the exoterra. Okay? And then you're gonna run it right on through to where you want it to go. And for me, since I am doing this the hard way, I'm just gonna go in from the top. There we go. And then you're gonna Close it off. And then it's as simple as pulling it through and hooking it up. I had this hooked up, but to make it easier, I did the... Okay, so there is Miss King piece number one. The next piece that you attach is your T-port, which is going to connect to the next cage. I'm going to go right like that. Okay, so... T port is connected. Nice and easy, just like that. Next thing you're gonna do is repeat the exact same process. Is repeat the exact same process. So you're gonna get a piece of your tubing, cut it. Right like that. You're gonna I love it. They're all, they're all out looking around like, what is going on? 
This is new. Okay. Okay, now that's perfect because I have this going on to the side, which is going to make it really easy for me. Cut that to be a little bit shorter. There you go, dude. Okay. Then you're going to take your T. You notice I have a close end piece here. You can also use an elbow that's missing this piece but I'm actually gonna be eventually connecting another piece to this, so an elbow is not gonna work for me. All Miss King parts, pumps, accessories ship for free on my website, always. One thing I hated when I first got started in this hobby is how hard it was when I would need like one Miss King piece and I would go to competitors and they would charge me $4.95 to ship a $3 part that, that drove me off the wall. So next thing is connecting it. So you're gonna take, take, put it in, you're gonna connect this piece and you're gonna measure it out. You're gonna cut it and then connect. Okay, and then you're gonna get, and then you're gonna connect it to the next piece over here. So I'm going to put it in right here, and then I got to get this stopper out, put it off of there, I'm going to cut and connect. Did you hear that noise? That's because there's pressure built up in this nozzle already. And you can see how it's all connected. Now, as you guys can see, I have a fully functioning vivarium for my Borneo eared frogs. I'm actually gonna. And now, now I'm gonna add a little bit more water into it. You guys can soak that in. So I'm going to add in a little bit more water here. Okay. And you can see the filter is working in the back there. Now you can see the water moving. It's out getting out of focus. And then from there, we're gonna make sure that's all good to go, which it is. So we have a source moving the water. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is test the Mist King. I'm gonna shut the door. And this is always good to make sure it's doing its job. There we go. Look at that. That happy frog. So, again guys, my name is Josh Falter. I am the founder of the Bio Dude and Tree Frog Breeder Extraordinaire, which I think you guys will enjoy, which I'm actually keeping the babies with the adults. Baby Borneo Eared Frogs. Oh 
Here you go, little dude. Get in there. I think that looks pretty nice. I can deal. I think the Borneos will be happy in there. Has some nice dark spots to it. It's not too cluttered, but it still gives them room to hide. So, you see how easy this was for me to do. Another selling point is this tank. I just moved it. This tank is only now maybe like 75 pounds compared to having to use all the rock to create all of this would have added another 120. You have an extremely great material that is really doing its job well, not having issues with the compression and it's just, it's great. Again guys, this is called Metalla and I will be selling it on my website great for paludariums and like I said guys visit my website www.thebiodude.com check me out on Facebook subscribe to my YouTube channel I am on Instagram I really appreciate everybody the the dude abides